about seven years ago, I was diagnosed with a very rare form of bone cancer called chordoma, which happened to be situated right in the very center of my head. And after having a very complicated surgery to remove the tumor, I uh, was shocked to find out that this, uh, this disease that I had has an average survival of about seven years, uh, a very high recurrence rate, and if and when the tumor recurs beyond surgery and radiation, there weren't any effective therapies to deal with the disease. Uh, so being 18 years old at the time, uh, I became determined not to accept those statistics and, and really determined to try to change those odds. And, and so as I tried to wrap my head around uh, this disease, uh, actually through what you might call a stroke of luck, found out actually that the only federally funded Cordoma researcher in the country happened to be an oncologist at Duke University where I was an undergraduate at the time. And I really didn't have anything to offer the lab. I didn't have any background in science, but I did have a great deal of motivation and a great deal of hope and maybe some naivete and uh, joined this lab to try to do something to impact uh, my disease. And studied molecular biology and genetics and learned uh, the fundamentals of, of cancer research from this lab, but very quickly realized that one lab could only do so much and that if we really wanted to have an impact on this disease, that we were going to have to create the conditions to make it possible for other labs to bring their expertise to bear on this problem. We were going to have to create the conditions to make it possible for companies to, uh, to invest in Cordoma research. But more than that, we couldn't actually wait for researchers and companies to come to us, but we actually had to proactively drive the research uh, and, and move the science forward. And so to do that, uh, my mother and I started the Cordoma Foundation in 2007. And over the last six years, we've come quite a long way. We've uh, developed a biobank to collect and distribute Cordoma tumor tissue. Uh, we've developed cell lines and animal models. We've developed a preclinical drug screening pipeline so that companies or academic researchers who have compounds that they're interested in testing in Cordoma can very quickly get answers and, and determine the preclinical efficacy uh, of those compounds. Uh, we've sequenced the Cordoma genome and identified a number of therapeutic targets, including a gene called Brachyuri, which happens to be altered in about 97% of Cordoma patients. And so that's a really exciting finding from a scientific standpoint. But I realized that uh, financing the development of a treatment for brachyuria, if it were only relevant to Cordoma, uh, could be quite challenging. Uh, but fortunately, as is the case for so many uh, targets in oncology, uh, brachyuria is actually relevant for a number of other more common tumor types. It turns out to be uh, important in the metastatic process for uh, breast cancer, for lung cancer, for colon cancer. And fortunately, because of that, uh, just this year, a company called Globimmune actually brought the first therapy targeting brachyuri into the clinic. And the Cordoma Foundation partnered with Globimmune to actually fill a phase one trial with Cordoma patients in under a month using social media, Facebook, Twitter, reaching out to the patient community and our connections in the, in the physician community. And so with that as an example, uh, I would just say to, uh, to the companies, to the investors, to the researchers here in the room today that uh, patients are really hoping not just to benefit from the therapies that you develop, uh, but patients are motivated. Uh, we are willing and eager and empowered through organizations like the Cordoma Foundation to be real partners in the drug development process. And I think that you'll find that by leveraging the know-how and the resources and the intense motivation that patients bring to the table, that the industry will go farther, faster, uh, and I think that we can make a great deal of progress uh, by working together. So with that, thank you very much for your attention.